Hello and good afternoon. It's a nice Sunday here today in sunny Scotland. Honestly, it's like a hot box. Hoping that this thunder comes that's been predicted and we can all cool down a little bit, which is weird for September, but also kind of nice, let's be honest with you. So what we've got today is a Philips, uh, I'm trying to find the code on it, a CDR775 audio recorder. This is quite a new bit of kit for the channel, if I'm honest with you. This was part of a package of four items that I was gifted by somebody else in, in, who was friends with somebody else. And it was things that was not used anymore. There was a tape deck, an amplifier, and I believe this, and there was something else that I can't remember what it was. And it was under the uh, the assumption that all this gear was you know, kind of working. And when we plugged it all in to give it a test, not one piece of equipment worked, which was quite a record, I think, is that a whole system didn't work. The amplifier was, had a shot to ground and the protection fuse was kicking in. The tape deck has bus belts. And this one, I haven't got as far as even plugging it in. So I'm presuming it doesn't work, same as the rest. Quite a snazzy bit of kit, really. It's a pretty well put together bit of kit. Philips gear, you know, hit and miss. This is the, the consumer level stuff that would have been picked up, I'm going to say, in the late 90s, early 2000s, 2001 or 2. Um, if it's a two-speed writer, then it's an early one. So you're looking at maybe 2000, 2001, as a guess, going back from my PC CD writing days. I'm just kind of trying to remember what speeds we all started at in what year. I think I had an eight-speed in about 2001. Buttons are all nice. Some of these seem to light up, I presume, because they're kind of translucent. And we have an easy jog wheel on there, a little bit like the, the mini disc players have for inputting the text. So let's power it on, stick a disc in each side and see what happens. All right, so there's the power to it. It has an on switch, it's actually on. Uh, Philips with one L CD recorder. And I don't know if you can hear that. I think it was this side. This is actually whizzing away at a crazy speed trying to find a disc. So today's test CD is going to be uh, the Immaculate Collection, which contrary to what people might say, is an amazingly produced album. If you listen to it through a decent system, it sounds absolutely insane. Nice clean disc. The inside of this drawer is manky. I'll show you that in a little bit, but when I say manky, I mean manky. And this light is selected as this side is the side that wants to be in use. It's ticking away like the laser's not finding the table of contents. I'm going to suggest it's not. Oh, it has read that one actually. It took a while. And it's kind of. Duck, 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 duck. Will it actually play something? Yeah, that is, seems to be playing that side, albeit noisily. And this is pretty cool. We've got a little VU meter on the front there as well. For a CD player, I'm actually quite impressed by that. Let's just skip. Where is skip forward? Oh, it seems like skip forward's on here regardless. we go halfway through the disc. So that sign kind of plays. It, it, it took a while to read that table of contents. It doesn't seem to really... It's in a little bit, a little bit of resistance of picking that up. So let's try on this other side. I wonder what mechanisms transports even these are yeah that's making a, a, a quite a loud clicking noise there when the, the laser's resetting so now pressed it close this is automatically swapped over to this side as well this one doesn't sound like it's reading the table of contents it's kind of going to ta -ta 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 -ta. we don't have the noise of the laser on this one though of the on the transport moving around we've just got you can hear the laser motor going backwards and forwards not finalized does it think that it's a recordable disc it does say audio cd playback on this side yeah and i'm going to suggest that's not that's not having it either so i'll start off with what i think is probably going to be wrong with it is that it's that all the lasers are absolutely manky it needs all the uh, transports re-greasing and cleaning and whatever else but that one doesn't really seem to be doing anything either so let's have a closer look now as we look a little bit closer there, as you can see, 
significant amount of dirt and muck and rubbish in there. It must have been a dusty place all its life. Possibly that this side just never got used as much because it is a uh, there's strictly the recordable side. It seems like you've got a normal belt in there for eject. You can just see the wheel at the centre of the screen. Oh my goodness. Uh, so I think what I'd like to do is uh, laser clean, transport clean, re-grease and see if I can possibly replace those belts as well. Rather annoyingly, Philips has decided to put star drives on the screws to remove the case, which is more than annoying, I'll say, to be honest with you, because it took me a while to dig it out. But that's the first time I've seen that on a deck, and maybe it does, just goes hand in hand with the, the, the relative newness compared to other things we've been used to. Inside then, pretty uneventful, but as expected, there is a fine layer of dust on everything, if we can just see that power supply there. If it made it all the way back to the power supply, then it's going to be in all aspects of these transports. I'm going to say that these are what I would say, look at the dust in there. They look like PC tower transports, to be honest with you, they have the same dimensions. They don't look very easy to dismantle, if I'm honest. They seem to have that traditional metal cage around the outside. We don't need to remove any fronts off the drawers because they are actually flaps on the front. So I believe, and I think, that if I can disconnect all these ribbons at the back, the right-hand side one seems to be on a jumper to the left-hand side one, as you can see there. Remove these ribbon cables, and then we'll take out more of these star drive screws in there, and then we'll see if we can get these transports out and aid in a bit of cleaning and servicing. For anybody interested, these are a T10 Torx bit, so if you need to buy some tools for this, T10 is the only one. Right, so here's our first one then. It's actually absolutely extremely simple. That's the first one out. And underneath, not a lot to see. I'm hoping that this will separate from the cage, probably via these torque screws again, and we can get in and give this a good clean. If I can just get it to yeah, hopefully we can get in and just give us a good clean by somehow removing this cage off the top. But it looks very similar to a PC transport. Um, we have a cord on the side there, maybe we can check that ourselves. But uh, for info as well, all the torque screws are the same size, so don't worry about too much about getting them mixed up. So Same for this side, hopefully. We do have this, this longer one is still connected. I'd like to have a look underneath this end before I decide to tug on this. So... This should be much the same, and hopefully if I can flip it over, yeah, we've got a, a pole connector on that side. I just want to make sure that, yeah, there we go. So that one, much the same, nothing amazingly different. Different transport, obviously, we've got the motor there for the open and close, maybe we can change that belt. Um, it's just me awake, a way of working out how to disassemble this. There is no notable serial numbers on this one though. Maybe we could get something off the board. But all right, let's have a look at the first transport. So this is a left hand side transport, absolutely manky, covered in dust. The only thing I can see to start with this is to try and remove this metal shroud off the top, which is four screws underneath there. Hopefully you're not getting blinded by my reflective light, but there's not a lot else I can do. So let's uh, pull these four screws out. Again, all identical screws. So this obviously is a ribbon connected to the chipboard that needs to be extracted somehow. Let's have a look underneath. Hmm. There's no actual way of lifting this up. That's the laser connector. So we have our usual, this is absolutely manky. If you can just see in there, we have our usual um, pull tabs. If I can get the light in there. We've got these little black pull tabs here, these need to be pulled that way. I'm gonna pop those and hopefully we can just pull the ribbon cable. If I can just zoom in there, let's see. That's a little bit better zoomed in. You can also appreciate the level of mankiness in here as well, but I'm gonna pull these uh, these little black plastic clips towards this way and then this ribbon cable should drop out that is not going to be fun to put back in but luckily they've put this little hole there for us to reconnect later on 
So if I just pop that's one side there. So maybe I can tease that along this way. Yeah. There we go. And this should now just pop out this way in the ideal world. And we can put our spudger underneath that white part and just pop it out and allow us to remove the board. So as you can see then, this is our actual sliding transport and everything else. There's a lot of dirt and muck in this. I'm not gonna to touch the lasers, but as much as I can avoid it. But if you can, if I move this up, look at the level of dirt and muck that is on this. Look at that IC there. That's, that's pretty bad. But dust on that is fine. It doesn't really do anything other than the fact that it could potentially go back into the laser once we've cleaned it. So I'm going to completely disconnect this board via these two uh, connectors here, exactly the same routine, a little tab we're going to pull, remove the board completely and this power plug over here, give that a blast with uh, a can of air and then we can hopefully get in here and clean that laser and the transport and re-grease. So now what we're left with is the actual transport and the cage. And the black transport part, the plastic part, as you can see, is held in place with these little rubber feet. Uh, I'm just pointing to one of my thumb there. If I can use my spudger as a as a pointing tool. This is just a little piece of rubber here which holds it to this, this metal part. I've just pulled one out there to try and work out how to do it and you can kind of see it disconnected. So this is just a rubber leg and it was in fact inserted in there. So what we're gonna have to do is pop our spudgers if you have a spudger let me get a corner where i can get a good bit of light on it you see uh, pop our spudger kind of behind it and then slowly tease it away from the metal cage there's plenty of room i just don't want to damage them there we go and that just pops out and so rinse and repeat for all four so once the, all these rubber feet are disconnected then it's just a case of separating the, uh, the cage from the transport itself without damaging any ribbon cables. Just discard that for now. And there we have one semi normal looking CD transport. And I think we'll end up removing this black plastic shroud off the top. It's just clipped into place to reveal the laser, which is some clips. I can use my spudger, I see, and get focused. We're just going to pop these clips, hopefully, without breaking one. There we go. And there's that one. It feels like you're going to break this. It's horrible. And that hopefully should kind of lift off. <laughs> I hate working on plastic transport. So why I can't, there we go. So I kind of stay away from the CD players, if I'm honest with you. Um, pretty clean. That's not too bad. The laser itself, if I try and catch the reflection on it, yeah, that's definitely monkey. You can see the dust on it there. So we're doing a good job. And as you can see, all the dust down here on the wheels and the rails that it slides along backwards and forwards, that all needs cleaning up. So we're going to give the laser a clean first and then the cursory clean, get rid of as much dust as we can to keep it out. And then hopefully we can rebuild the drive belt's hidden underneath this part here so if i can kind of get the not force but persuade it to eject a couple of inches this gap in the middle might let us change the drive belt i've started on a little bit of a play and what i've worked out is that when you eject the transport has to uh, pull away from the, the discs so if we just slide this white bit in that'll position the actual transport itself away from the door You'll push it all the way in, like that, and that'll just pop the, the drawer out. And then we can just manually, carefully slide the drawer back to show us where the belt's going to be. So let's pull that for a start. This is good because if you remove the drawer on a lot of CD transports, you kind of have to realign it, which is an absolute pain in the you know what. 
And this, no, no, this belt's actually probably totally fine. But if we're here, why not? And we can do this for two. It feels totally fine, to be honest with you. So, but I'll change it anyway for the sake of a, what looks like a generic square drive belt. We'll just change that out. All right, so all dusted and clean for one then. I've removed some old grease from the rails and basically blown everything out and give it a, a clean as best as I could. It was best done outside in the fresh air, if I'm honest, because otherwise it all just ended up just going round and about and back onto it. I haven't touched the laser yet, so I've got cotton buddy here with some IPA on it and I'm going to give it a very gentle clean. As you can see, it moves around when you clean it. So a really, really gentle clean. It's only a bit of plastic you're cleaning, but as clean as it can be the better and I like to do it with the wet side and then also kind of buff it with the the dry side really really gentle I'm hardly putting any pressure on that and that's it and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on standard Mollicoat DX I like to use grease for mechanical systems I'm going to put a little bit on a cotton board and just put it on the rails and one of the sliders you really don't need much at this stage, but basically I like to put it on this kind of toothed rail at the back. You only need a little tiny bit, and then as it, as it starts working, it should work its way around the transport a little bit as well. And then I'm also going to put some on these silver rails, as you can see. Just a little bit on the top of that one, and a little bit on this one as well. Just keep the grease away from your laser. That's Paul's tip. And then with a couple of cycles, that will be uh, spread to where it needs to be. And a little bit more grease now on some of the plastic parts. And then rebuild and done. Let's stick a new belt on. I've got a bit of grease on my finger there. I don't really want that. The easiest transport belt I think I've probably ever done. And I've just used a, it's just a standard square belt out of one of those belt kits you'll get. Because literally all it's there for is ejecting the uh, the tray and it'll find its own kind of little feet in its own little way and I would like to put a little bit of grease on just the rails there just one little dab and one little dab just where the plastic meets the plastic and then I'm going to put some underneath as well I'll show you where shut that if you can see this this white piece here where the, there's some metal prongs, this white slice of plastic is what slides back and forth for the eject mechanism. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there as well. And that should now make the eject mechanism a little smoother every time it wants to eject the tray. and push that back to where it was. And that kind of uh, is going to get it where it needs to be. Excellent. So in the home position is up like that. Now we can put it back together. So this piece on the top is symmetrical, so you can stick it on however or little way you want. And that's us in. And I'm back in the cage. Now once we're back in the cage there, you kind of got to force these rubber feet underneath these bits to allow you to kind of like that look. If I can show you kind of like that and I want to underneath to slide it back home so all four of my feet now are like that and I'm just going to push it until it clicks into place and that's it back where it lives just kind of floats on those rubber feet and we can reconnect our chipboard and put it back in just double make sure that when you put these feet back in this is how they look they don't sit underneath the silver tabs they sit on top, there's like a little notch cut out for you to slide the silver tabs into the feet. I'm not only showing you my victories, I'll also show you my issues. I put this back together and the drive door wasn't aligned anymore. So you make sure they're like that, if that makes any sense. See from a side angle. Do that. So for this one, make sure that your clips are all the way out before you try inserting those little ribbon cables. Otherwise, they just won't go in. Like that. So you can't see any of the uh, the metal contacts. And then once they're in, just very carefully 
put a bit of pressure bit by bit on each side until they're both seated like that. So the same on this one. And you have a bit of blue on the back there, it's like an extra bit of plastic to make that bit a little bit tougher. Because they know that if you want to reconnect it, you're going to have to put a little bit of force on it at least. power cable and then we can button this up and all we've got left to do is reconnect this ribbon cable I'm gonna do it through that hole because um, I'm a sucker for punishment and that should that should allow you to reseat the chipboard and then you've got your uh, little ribbon cable there but I'll show you a trick with that in a second Let's put the screws down first. So here lies the challenge. We've got to refit this ribbon cable underneath and somehow keep control of it. You see this little bit of white plastic here? This has actually got like a lip. If you notice, I can, there's about, I don't know, four or five mil. And if you stick something underneath that, for now, for now, it'll kind of let you hold and control that quite nicely. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just feed that underneath, like so. Make sure that your black plastic clip, excuse my fingers, is all the way out. And I'm going to attempt to reinsert that just using this spudger tool, if I can. Like that. Beautiful. And then when you make sure that it's, when you're happy, sorry, that it's all the way in, refit the clip bit by bit and we should there and I'll probably go look at the video earlier that should be inserted all the way in nice on the reverse of drive number two then this is much the same we're going to go start by removing this circuit board and these four screws that are torques again you'll see that we have no convenient space, two power cables and a ribbon cable to remove. Power cables are pretty straightforward because they're very close. I think I can just pop that one out with my, my fingernails, hopefully. There's some wiggling, there's one, and there's one over here as well. Let me get this budger in there underneath it, perhaps. Yeah, there we go. And we actually have two ribbons in there, which is a little bit more awkward. So the first ribbon is this one, which is again, just got the little push connector and then we can hopefully wiggle that ribbon cable out of there, like so. And then there's another one on the other side. The main one actually gives us a lot more room to maneuver. As you can see, it doesn't seem like a lot on the camera, but it gives us sufficient to be able to swing a mouse in there at least. And it's just a case of just popping those tags like so, and then separate that. A little bit different, but very similar. Instead of those rubber feet, we actually have some more top screws we can see the worm drive motor there. This one is a lot cleaner than the other ones. So it should be a bit quicker. Uh, I'm gonna pull these four screws out here and separate the black plastic part from the cage. And then it looks like this is another bar mechanism here to allow us to eject, change the belt and give it a clean. Yeah, so once they're out, it's just a case of a gentle Slide, not catching your power cables there. If you can, you kind of thread them underneath that tab and then <laughs> bit by bit that is separated from the cage too. So, same again, black plastic tabs. Don't use a spudger, it's actually easier to use your hands, I've just found out. This is actually the same part that was on the top of the other one. And there's our laser. Let's have a look at that laser. 
Yeah, again, it's got a fair amount of dust on it, but not as much. Identical method from the last one to uh, to remove the drive. That belt was actually kind of hard, actually, with no real flex left in it. There's a separate belt for that one. And we'll give this a bit of a dust. Same again then with the IPA and the rails and the greasing. I'm not going to bore you with watching it, but this laser is significantly more kind of sturdy than the last one. It's not quite as springy. And this is the dry side. And then some grease on those rails. If I can see the rails on that side, we'll do this side on this one. And turn it over for the uh, the return side. Yeah, it's just the one. And I'm going to put some on the teeth of this worm drive as well, but simply because there is some on it already, and it is actually very clean. But it can only do some good to smooth it out. And again, on these these parts here, where the drive. touches on eject uh, okay that's it let's rebuild all right I didn't video putting these two ribbon cables back in because to be honest with you I was too busy swearing but if you put the little one in first then the big one life is a lot sweeter all right, so we've slid everything back in now, and it's a case of just putting these four screws back in. Out of the whole thing, these four screws are the only ones that are different. They look like self-tappers as opposed to uh, like machine screws, like this one. So your plasticky self-tappers are for putting the transport back together. And then the machine screws are for the circuit board. Da da! Transport number two. Cleaned, serviced, everything else. So, all that's left to do is to rebuild. Don't forget to reconnect this big long bad boy before you put the transport back in. Just make sure that's seated correctly. So, and all your connectors on the back as well. Let me tighten that one. Just make sure these are seated all the way before you press them down, otherwise you can't make a connection. And then once they're damaged, unless you can be bothered trying to shop around for replacement ribbon cables, it's game over. Because I think value-wise on these is it's not an amazing amount they always picture these as being something that makes life a lot easier for people to record cds and maybe didn't want a pc quite a convenient way to record cds right just screw these down and i've got a test all right so everything's back together let's give this a test and see if it's any improvement to what we had previously oh <laughs> I had me going for a minute there. Right, so I'll try this left hand side first. This was the one that was working but seemed to take ages to pick up the table of contents. Let's see if this is any improvement. This was a particularly minging side as well. Now what I have done is I've slowly realized as I was going through this repair that I've quoted this possibly the wrong way around. That is the player, that is the recorder as given away by the recordable compact disc. So that picks up the tracks exactly as expected. Uh, it skipped really fast halfway. Yeah, that's picking up the tracks great. I would argue it's a little bit faster, but you know, we can only improve on what was already there. And we've serviced the belt and applied the grease. Okay, so this side we're happy with. This was the problem side. So let's see what happens with this one now. This one was not doing anything. 
see what happens with this. Hey, success. So there we go. Another one saved from the, the bottom of a bin somewhere, shall we say. Um, it's quite satisfying that such a, a pretty straightforward job has ended up with us uh, having a nice new uh, usable piece of equipment. It's weird, it seems that the levels are a little higher on this side compared to this side. We're going into the red on this one. I'm not entirely sure why. We're having a bit of a play of holiday there. So, anyway, I digress. Hopefully this has proved useful to somebody. I don't generally get as many views with CDs and amps as I do with cassette decks, but this has been a nice, mechanical, clean and finish and sort out. And now I think I might use this deck myself. I think my brother said he'd like it to uh, to record some vinyl and he can play them in the car. So this is probably going to go back to my brother's house and he can have a bit of a play with this. But I'm going to enjoy some holiday and some lucky star. It's anybody who's not got this album, by the way, it is uh, amazing. The track list on this is absolutely outstanding. Um, anyway, if you like my videos, please drop a like and subscribe. As much as I sound like a teenager, I'd really appreciate a subscribe. It's nice to see uh, the, the level of subscriptions go up. And the likes only improve the algorithm that other people get to see my videos and, you know, share the wealth. But I'm presuming that this is possibly a high rate of failure on this from looking at forum posts and stuff. So hopefully anybody who hasn't seen this video or has got one of these and is having a search for how to fix their own, this is how to do it. So I'm going to fire the cover back on and go away and have a cup of tea and enjoy a little bit of Madonna. And maybe we'll have a bit of a, a record on this side as well. But there we go. Having a great day, guys. On to the next one, which is something a little bit unusual. Goodbye.